And we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cats Creations with the overhead view on a Sunday night. Um, tonight, I'm going to be teaching you for the first time ever how to make one of my angels. And this one we're going to be doing is a patriotic angel. So um, I'm going to walk you through all the steps. I will explain everything to you. What else will I do? Um, answer any questions you have, give you some tips along the way. And um, let's see what else. I'm trying to think of what else, what else, what else, what else. Um, if you're new here, let us know. We'd like to welcome you. And let me know where you're from. I'd love to know where you guys are joining us from. YouTube subscribers, this is also a first for you as well. This is going to be uploaded to YouTube later tonight. So YouTube subscribers, make sure you click that subscription bell so you don't miss out on any of the amazing tutorials. So hi, Mary. Hi, Elda. Hi, Anne. Thanks for joining. Hi, Barbara. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, because I've already cut, you will need a, a grand total of 12 10-inch pieces. What? First thing is last thing to show. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, so um, you'll need a grand total of 12 10 inch pieces. And I'm gonna show you how you use the wood burning tool to cut your pieces. So I always highly, highly, highly recommend that you use a wood burning tool. Um, you'll need one with a um, temperature so that you can alter the temperature. I keep mine at 425. That's about as hot as you need to go. You'll need a tempered glass cutting board. So I got mine at Walmart. This one happens to be a 12 by 15. And then I usually put a smaller cutting mat underneath whenever I'm using the um, wood burning tool because then I can just pick the whole thing up, set it to the side till it cools down and then put everything away. So this particular deco mesh, we're doing a red, white, and blue striped, and it's going to be red, white, and blue striped. So for the wings and for the skirt. And so I try to vary these every year and not make the same one twice. Although I will replicate them if I have the material. So if you're looking for one in particular and they're sold out on my website or my Etsy shop, just message me and let me know which one you're interested in. And I can let you know if I have the materials available to do that. So this, like I said, is red, white, and blue. This is what would be considered a wide foil mesh. So it's a little bit more expensive than the regular deco mesh, um, but I haven't done a patriotic angel in this color, so that's what we're doing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch this out. And the one thing that you'll always notice when cutting deco mesh is, if you're ever looking, you kind of can see like a little, like how your deco mesh will kind of pull so it's never really like perfectly straight down the line, but you want to make sure that your, your pieces are exactly 10 inches. So I always try to make it as smooth as possible. So you can see just by making these small little adjustments, I'm trying to get my 10 here to be perfect or as perfect as possible so that I can get a straight 10 inch line. And what you want to do is you're using a chisel tip point on your wood burning tool and you're going to start somewhere around your 10 inch mark. You'll notice that a deco mesh piece is always divided up into columns and rows. And so what you're going to do when using your wood burning tool is you're going to stay in your column all the way down. You're not going to deviate. You're not going to just stay down the line. You want to try to keep your pieces as even as possible. What the wood burning tool does is it helps seal the edges or melt the edges of those pieces so we don't get the things like frays on some of our deco mesh designs. And on the angels, you can tell the difference between really good quality angels is you don't have the frays, the everything looks perfect. So I'm gonna sit here and take this right down on my 10. I'm staying right in that line, regardless of what the mesh does. I'm just kind of veering, you know, if it kind of deviates a little bit off to the side, 
then that's the way I'm going to go. So what you're getting basically is a perfect 10 by 10 inch piece. So hopefully this will not fray. And then you will do that for a grand total of 12 pieces. Or if you want to mix and match the colors, you're going to need six for wings and six for the skirt. So you can pick um, whatever you want to do. Like sometimes I'll do this will be the whole skirt and then I'll, I'll pair that with like white wings or I might take this and alter this with like red, blue, and then this mesh. So just remember, skirt pieces are a grand total of six. Wing pieces are a grand total of six as well for a total of 12 10 inch pieces. So I'm gonna put this to the side. And I'm gonna discuss the easiest way to build your angels is to have everything prepped um, that you're gonna need to assemble it ahead of time. So you have all your pieces cut. I have all of mine set. You're gonna need a glue gun. You're gonna need pipe cleaners. Um, and the first thing that I do is I kind of like personalize her halo and our halo is created using your pipe cleaners. So with this one, we're doing red, white, and blue. I'm going to use a metallic red just to kind of pull the sparkle up into her halo. And I like to just twist right here at the tip to hold them all together. And I'm trying to keep them as even as I possibly can so that we can see all the colors as we twist all the way down. So you'll need, if you're doing three colors like this, you don't have to do all three. I just think it looks it looks good if you can make it all kind of color coordinate. So just twisting. So we have all the colors represented in her halo, just like this. So now we have a really pretty red, white, and blue halo. You will need two pieces for holding everything together, like all of your deco mesh pieces. You'll need another pipe cleaner for the skirt and then you'll need one for the hanger. So I'll show you how we're gonna be putting all those together. But I haven't quite decided if I wanna do blue or if I wanna do red for the hangers. It's all gonna depend on what I like when I'm putting the whole thing together. So I have enough that I can pick and choose from the colors that I want. So pipe cleaners for that. Um, it's up to you. I prefer to put um, my angels with little bells. So Hobby Lobby sells these. These are half inch bells. So you can get them like at Christmas, you can get them in gold, silver, red, green. You can get little rusted ones if you'd like. So she's gonna have a silver bell because we don't have um, white. We have red, but I'm doing a red bow. So I want the bell to stand out. Um, then you're also going to need inch and a half ribbon, and you're gonna cut these to four inch pieces. So just like this, four inches, um, inch and a half ribbon, you need three. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna dovetail the ends, just like this. You don't have to go too deep on your dovetail. I used to do them all together, but then it never felt there would always be one that's just off. Okay, do this one as well. Okay, so now we have all three of those done. You will need 26 gauge floral wire because now what we're going to do is we're going to create her apron or her bib, whatever you wanna call it. I call it a bib. It just basically hides all the um, mechanics of how it's built. So you can take your ribbon and figure out which one you like, which one has the prettiest look on the front. Like this one has two full stars. This is like just one. Can That's can one. Ribbon of all the matches? Yeah, you can pick. The, the great thing about this method is you can use like, I think you can get three per 10 inch roll of deco mesh, but I caution using like the last 10 pieces, they're so tightly wound that what you're looking for on a perfect wing tip is ones that lay flat. So if you're gonna use the last 10, 
Um, put something heavy on them, let them sit for a day or so so that they get that curl out of it and then use them. So I'm laying them with like about an eighth of an inch overlap stacked on top and then you're going to pinch just like this. And then I'm going to take my floral wire. I'm going to wrap this around the back and we're going to twist. And this will hold all those three pieces together. And it's about half inch from the top. Make sure I was spinning it the right way. I'm trying to get this in there pretty tight. We'll go ahead and snip this off. And then I like to take the little end piece and I'm gonna push that up, not down. And then you're gonna kind of fan it out. So this is gonna be her little bib that hides everything. And I'm gonna trim that little fray off, just like that. If it's a little too, like if it's not, I'm really picky when it comes to making these. These are like my signature piece, so I want them to not look like less than. So here's her bib. She has her bell. We're going to take another piece of our floral wire and we're going to make her bow. So I prefer to use five inch wired ribbon if you can find it. This was left over from Hobby Lobby at Christmas. It's one of my favorites to use because it's wired. So we're going to dovetail the end. Just like that. Make sure I'm not happy with the way that one's looking. Let's do this one a little bit better. There we go. Better. Okay. I'm going to bring this up. One, two, three, four, five. Right at the sixth line. I'm going to make a small little loop. It's basically just big enough for your finger to fit in. We're going to pinch just like we're making a small little hand tied bow. We're going to bring this over. See how we can get one finger in there. And then we're going to twist. And then we know it's about six. And the bow's only about an inch. That, right? inch, inch and a quarter. Yeah, I'll measure it as soon as I get everything all tied together. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my floral wire. I'm going to grab it in the center and we're going to spin. You want it tight so that we have one loop, one loop, and we have the other tail. So let's go ahead and trim this one up and give this one a dovetail and then I'll cut the wire off. So what we've assembled is, let me cut this off. Here's our loop, here's our loop. So this is actually going to sit on top of the apron or a bib and then our bell is actually going to go right in the center so that's how all that's going to get assembled once we get the wings and the skirt together so it's just easier if you have the prep work done this is what i do every single time that i'm making them you will also need an inch and a half round ball now i am not this is just my preference. I'm not a fan of using any other colored ball, but you can. I just prefer using white for like the metallic type of angels. And if I'm going to use um, like That's more rustic looking. Let's see if I have one. you can use the round inch and a half and that's exactly what they're at Hobby Lobby. Inch and a half, they have them with holes or non-holes. It doesn't matter if they have holes in them because you're gonna hide the holes. 
Um, but I prefer to use these on the more rustic and country, and I use the solid white on everything else. So that's just me. If you wanna use colored bowls, uh, feel free. These I pick up every Christmas at Hobby Lobby in the miniature section, and you get about 16, I think, 12 or 16 in a package. 12, yeah. And um, they're about $4.99. Pick up a couple boxes of them. So you'll find them in the miniature section. They won't be anywhere else. Merry Christmas. And they're plastic. So you're gonna cut the little plastic piece off because we need that to fit flush on top of the, her body. So that's actually gonna fit in here, okay? And then the last thing we need to do is form fit her halo. So super easy, you're gonna take it, you're gonna wrap it around her head for size, just like that. So we'll go ahead and pull her halo off. And then we're gonna twist the ends of her halo. So now we know that the halo fits. Cause I'd like it to give the appearance that the halo is not attached, but it actually is. It's attached to the back of her head. So it actually floats a little bit like, Steve's like the pro at doing this. He's like my, my master builder but it's actually gonna glue along the back of her head so that when you're seeing her from the front, it looks like her halo's floating because you don't see it attached to the back. So, and then now you've got all your pieces together. You've got your ball, you've got your halo, you got your bib, your bell, and your bow. It's all like BBB, right? So I'm gonna set those aside. This is where you need to have a bodabra or you have to have somebody who's going to be patient enough um, to hold everything for you. Um, I've had people ask, can you use clothespins and clothespin each one of the pieces and then pick up the clothespins and kind of stack them? Yeah, you can, but there's such a easier method of doing this. No, because I want to be able to show them they can do it themselves. So he's like, you want me to come help you? And I'm like, no, because you need to be able to see that you can do this all on your own. Okay, any questions before we start building the body? Any questions at all? And I know Steve's been doing a really good job filling all my questions for me. Yeah, a couple of people asked questions, but I, I was filling them in. Yeah, I think I watched them as they were popping through. Yeah, Lynn Robbins said she has a wood burner, but it doesn't have a temperature like hand guide in it. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, you need a temperature guide to control the, the heat of it. Yeah, because it'll make all the difference in the world how quickly it goes through. And then as you can see, it's it's kind of holding all those pieces together for me yep. so that it won't fray. It won't pull out. And Linda also said, yeah, those whatevers are very versatile. Yes, they are. They really are. So, okay, let me show you how we're going to do this. So, your deco mesh is going to stretch one of two ways. So, I always say if you can put the finished edge to the right or I'm sorry, to the left of your hand, you'll get a longer stretch than you would if you were stretching it this way. You'll be able to tell if you're doing it wrong. If some of your pieces come up shorter than others, it means you folded it on the wrong side. So just remember, finished edges to the left. So here's finished edge here, finished edge here. I'm basically using, it's kind of folded on a diamond. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go corner to corner. We're gonna bring it in about halfway and then all the way over, just like this. But now you're gonna stretch it. You need to pull it. You need to stretch that because this is where you get the length of your wings, okay? And then you're gonna fold it up about halfway in, fold it up again, and then you're gonna fold it flat. So it's kind of like you got a little open mouth there. And then this is one piece. You grab your bodabra, you take your whole piece, and you lay it in here. This is the difference between people who are doing this right and people who aren't. You can tell the people who don't really care about the quality because their wings are different sizes, 
They're different lengths. They're bowed. They're not like angled correctly. Um, so you need to keep them stacked perfectly if you can. So sometimes as it gets a little full, I'll take my scissors and use it just to kind of keep it flat. And then you're gonna grab your next piece. So folded edge here, right? Bring it to the center all the way over, stretch it. Then you're gonna go fold up, fold up in half. And then we're folding out flat like this. And then this is going straight in. And they're all right now, all those pieces that are being stacked, the open ends, like this is an open end, the open ends are facing me. So open here, the backs are, are away from me. So we're gonna do that six times. Normally you can, you can stretch them pretty good. So you really want the length on the wings. You don't want them just, just fold them and just put them in. The finished angels will come out 18 inches wide, 18 inches long, and two and a half inches tall. So they're perfect for storm doors. So here, all the way to the top. Okay, stretch it. And you can get that bow jabber pretty much almost anywhere at uh, Hobby Lobby, Michael Joann's. Even we've heard bow jabber has been at Walmart. Yeah. Um, Make sure you get the deluxe or the large bow jabber. You need the large. You don't want to get the small because that's hair bows. So, God, man, when I was buying mine, when I bought mine years ago, it's fifteen ninety nine, but I got the forty percent off coupon at Hobby Lobby. Um, if you can, try to find them at Michaels and Joann's so you can use a coupon with it, because that definitely makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I think you told me you're facing them towards you. Yes, so watch. Here I'm flipping, flipping, folding, and then I'm taking them to where the wings open are facing me right now. And then sometimes if you forget to, I need one more. I'm gonna put rubberized ones that'll stay. If you get rubber handled stuff, it holds it because you really want them tight. Check in the mesh you can purchase from this is from Craft Outlet. Craft Outlet, the Reach Shop, any any other kind of crafting location. I really suggest that you use good quality mesh if you're making them. Like if you're using a Hobby Lobby quality mesh unless it's their premium, it's not gonna yield. It's gonna feel thin and flimsy. Yeah, you definitely want the thick foil. Yeah, you want something with some quality Light to it. Foil. So I've already done six. So now when I fold the next six, these are gonna get placed in the Bodabra facing the opposite direction. So this means the open part of the mesh, this being the open part is gonna go away from me. Okay, so now, remember how we were folding them this way and going in? Now they need to go in this way. So the last six, or the first six go one way, you can pick either going away from you or towards you, but then the last six have to go in the opposite direction. This was the thing that we refined the process after about two years, and I'll show you why when we finish what it does. So now they're going opposite. They're going away and we'll finish these up. It goes really quick. Usually I can, once I have all my stuff done, like all done, I can usually build one in about 30 minutes from start to finish. They don't take a lot. They don't take a long time. So back in the Bodabra, keeping my stacks even. So they don't come undone. Always keeping my mesh in that same stretched out direction. Fold to the middle, to the middle, and then fold back again. Back inside. Remember there's always a 12 pieces. 
Six for the skirt, six for the wings. Yes. Okay. Down to the center, all the way up. Stretch. Here, here, fold. So I always grab my stack, place it back inside, use my rubberized tool to hold it together. I got two more pieces left and we're done with building the body and the wings because what you're building is body and wings, the meat of your project. Folding here, okay, up, going down. Last one, okay, halfway to the middle, and then this one goes all the way up. Stretch, up, up, and then fold. And then these are going in here. Now, this is where you have to get really good. Um, you're gonna wanna take your pipe cleaner and you're gonna lay your pipe cleaner here. Why? Because you're gonna grab that whole stack and it's a lot and you're gonna need to make it flip flat down, which you'll see me do. And you can't lose your stacked um, pieces. So we're gonna lift the whole thing up. Don't worry if some pieces are like, well, it doesn't really look like they're all the same. It's okay, you can fix that in the end. So I'm going right here. Here's my whole stack, right? I'm gonna pull my pipe cleaners up. And what you don't want to happen is you don't want it to roll them up. You want it to stay flat, but keep all your pieces stacked. And you're gonna take your pipe cleaner and twist it all the way up. This is holding all your pieces together, okay? Just like that. Now you don't need your bodabra anymore. Okay, and you can already tell that, look, you can tell some are longer than the others. We can fix all that. So this is the back where your pipe cleaner is twisted is the back. So you can flip this over and now the ones that are open, the deco mesh pieces that are open are your wings. So wings are always open. The skirt is always closed. So what it does is it gives you a really smooth look to the skirt. Whereas before we were just, you know, keeping all the same pieces all going in the same direction. We didn't understand why it was fraying so bad at the bottom. It's because our pieces were, were dealing with the open ended pieces. And so now what I'm doing is pulling my skirt pieces down. So those are pretty even. I'm going to look at this next piece here. You don't have to be exactly perfect, but you definitely don't want one way shorter than the other. That's good. And I'm just pulling them down in the order they're stacked. Okay, that one's good. That one's looking good. And then here is our last piece, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. Okay, yes. Okay, so what I have a tendency of doing when I'm doing them, I've measured them to make sure that they're all roughly the same. So now I'm coming back to my first piece and I'm doing it tight. So when I'm pulling them down, I need them tight. So I ask can we use a zip tie to hold it together? Um, no, because you need to be able to make adjustments. Yeah. And you'll also understand why when we get to the assembling. And gluing, yeah. yeah, and the gluing why a zip tie won't work. So I'm going to make this one, see how I'm able to make those adjustments. If we zip tie it, we won't be able to pull on it. Okay. Or then, yes, you twist the pipe cleaner very tight, four, five, as tight six. as you can. Yes. And then even when I'm doing my skirt, I'm pulling this tight because this is her body. This is her skirt. So what I sometimes see is people will do the angels like this. And then they have a really long upper body and then this is their skirt. It doesn't really look right because what you want it to do is hopefully the skirt 
will flare out enough to where the wings and the skirt fill the, the whole thing and it kind of creates very fanned out look. So you want it to have a very short waist, probably no more than two inches. I'm gonna use red again. Now remember our pipe cleaner is going to the back. So that's my back. I'm gonna grab my pipe cleaner here, I'm trying to make it as even as I can. Okay. So again, you don't wanna pull so tight that you round the back. You need everything staying flat. By meaning rounding the back is, you don't want it to do this. You don't want it to roll over on itself. You wanna be able to see each layer of her skirt. So now we will twist this all the way up, just like so. Okay, so now if I flip this over, now see what I'm saying is her wings match the length of her, um, her skirt. So now this is where we can make adjustments to the wing tips. So I flipped it upside down and I can tell that this one's shorter than this. So I'm gonna be able to go and pull these so my wing tips are the same length Okay, that one's good. Gonna kind of look, gonna pull the second one down, pull these up. Those look pretty good. Let me look at number three. I think three is a little longer to look. Nope, that one's good too. Sometimes you can tell by looking at them, like they may just be off a little and you can make slight little adjustments like this, that's good. This one's a little long, so I'm gonna pull that through and we can definitely tell this one's way longer than this one. So you're just gonna be able to make those last minute adjustments, okay? Now, everything lays down together. You wanna make sure that your wing openings are open. They shouldn't be twisted. They shouldn't be upside down. They should all be open. That's what creates such a gorgeous look when we're done. Isn't that gorgeous right now? We haven't even attached her head yet. Okay. So this is the look that you're always going for. It's like this S curve in it. See how it's got like a little weird S? This is backwards S. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Now what you need is we're gonna go ahead and glue our head on. Oh no, wait, sorry. We're gonna actually go through the back. We're gonna uh, join these two together. I'm gonna twist these two together. These are just, again, odds and ends that we've developed over time to make sure that you have a really good quality product. And I'm going, I just twisted the ends together to get to her waistline and then I'm gonna cut that off. And then what I'm gonna do before we put her head on is I'm gonna go ahead and add a bead of glue here, right down the pipe cleaner. And that will help keep this from, um, whatchamacallit, what do I wanna say? From uncurling. So I like using wooden skewers because then I can let that, I can really put some weight on the end to get that glued down proper. So it just takes a minute. The one thing you want to do is don't rush. Yeah. And your first one's going to take the longest, but then every one that you make after that. Um, you improve time and quality. Yeah, and it's hard when you're the only person doing it. It, it takes a long time. Yeah. Like I am, the, long, the, the length of time that it's taking me now is exactly how long it would take me if I was doing this all by myself. But once you really start working on them and doing a couple at a time, you can really knock out quite a bit. You can change designs, you can have solid on the bottom. Yeah, White the fact that you have this open 
um, your decamesh open, you might decide, hey, I wanna do six at the bottom, that is her skirt, and then six at the top. So when you're doing different colored wings, just remember whatever color you want the skirt to be, the bottom half of your stack will either be wings or skirt. So if you're doing like red, white, and blue skirt, and then white wings, then the you'll put in six pieces done for the skirt. Remember the skirt needs to go away. Wings are open, skirt is away. So make sure that when you're doing that and laying it, that your wings are gonna need to, like whenever you're laying your stack down, your stack needs to be done to where you either have your skirt facing up or your wings are facing up. And you can go to her website because she's got some other, um, Photos, right, of different changes that you've done. Um, I think you can just Google. Um, if you go to Pinterest, I have a Pinterest board under Cats Creation Seven Seven Seven. You can see all the ones I've ever made. Okay, so now because we have the hole here, I'm just going to go right around the lip of my hole with my hot glue. This is the most important part, gluing her head on. So. We're gonna go ahead in between her wings. We're gonna go ahead and take, and we're gonna glue her head on, and we need to hold it until it's dry. So this is how we get her head on. And you always wanna make sure, if you're using the wooden ball, you do, um, you look at your wooden ball and make sure that you've got, you know, the-, the oval of the face the best possible view that you want yeah. is facing you, you know, that you're, you don't have it on backwards. Sometimes we try to put, um, it just kind of depends on how they make them, how they round them out, but sometimes they come with a natural oval. And so we try to use the oval to um, make it look like it's her face. And I don't put eyes on them. I don't put mouths on them. I've had people ask and I'm like, I don't do that because it's preference, right? If you want to put the eyes in the, the mouth and whatever else on your angel, mm -hmm. um, knock yourselves out. I've never put them on. Um, I just prefer them to be faceless. So, and that's exactly what I tell customers. It's like, I could put on eyes in a mouth and you might hate it. And at that point, hey, I've already like, I can't change that. I can't like paint over it and, and redo them. And Carol, it, or Karen, this wasn't heat sealed. Kat used a wood burning tool mm -hmm. for all of these. So you can always go back and watch the replay at the very beginning and she'll, she shows you how to wood burn one piece. I don't have the patience for the wood sealer and okay. I don't have the room to store the, what do you call it, the impulse sealer. Yeah. So you can kind of tell when your glue is just about set up. Um, if you're using a low temperature glue gun, um, sure. it kind of turns, it goes from clear to cloudy. Yeah. What were you saying? Well, Karen then asked, what, what would you sell these? How, what can these be sold for? Um, it depends. If you're selling them at a craft fair, I would probably price them a little bit lower than you have to sell them for on the website. Cause you guys know as all the website costs are high or Etsy's, Etsy's charging sellers, they're really penalizing sellers for selling them. Um, I sell them on my website for 37 and then it's 15 to ship within the lower 48 states. So it's, there's not, there's not a huge price markup for these, but they go really well this time of the year. A lot of people like to buy them for graveside memorials. So, they're just something inexpensive. So there's that. And now we're gonna work on stacking our pieces. So we're gonna take our bib, and this is where I was saying the bib hides the mechanics. So all the bib's purpose is, is to hide the pipe cleaner here and the pipe cleaner there. Even though it's not really that bad to look at, when you take your apron, and I'm actually gonna take a little bit more off of my, um, the top here, see how it, it covers the um, pipe cleaners and it just kind of makes okay. it look like a more universal piece. Did you turn it over? No. This is the back. 
This is the front. Okay. I've got it so good now that you're actually starting to question, am I gluing to the back? No, this is the back. See? Okay. Here's my glue right gotcha. here. Okay. So I am going to, before I do this really quick, um, you need a way to hang it. So I am going to, let's keep it all red. Right underneath the wings where their wings connect with the body, I'm going to slide a pipe cleaner right underneath here. For people who use year round holiday trees, this makes for a great tree topper for the 4th of July tree. You would just take this and twist this around the top branch and you're good. If you wanted to add it to your front door, you can take it and turn it into a little hook. I prefer to not see this hanging on the door. So I'd make it smaller than her head so that it hangs from below her head. If you have or, a door hanger, you could kind of make it into a hook. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you go about hanging it. So we're going to flip her back over and we're going to start to assemble her. So super simple. We're going to put a drop of glue right here underneath her head. And I'm going to make sure that's fanned out. I'm going to do the same thing with my stick. I'm going to hold my stick in place just to prevent any glue from, you know, your finger touching the glue or even the, the metal wire that you have has a tendency of getting kind of hot. So it gets pretty warm. Okay. And the one thing that I always forget is you can make these for any holiday. These are great if you do them in pink and white or pink, white, and purple. You can make them for new baby announcements. Mm -hmm. You can do them for Easter. You can do them for Christmas. You can do them for fall. You can do them for patriotic. July, yeah. You can make them for the beach. You can make yeah. them for anything. Don't just get hung up on Christmas. It was... Yeah, you made some beautiful ones that are teal with the shell. Yeah. yeah. So instead of like doing the bell, you can put a shell there. Or um, Hobby Lobby had Christmas time now with the scrapbooking um, thing being so big. They actually have miniature things like little miniature gingerbread men or little mm -hmm. miniature candy canes. And you can use that in place of the bell. Mm -hmm. So that's all set up. Now we're going to go ahead and add our bow. And each one of these is just covering up the next layer underneath so you don't see any of this. So here's our bow. It's going to go right on top. And I'm just using wood skewer sticks from Dollar Tree. You can get a hundred of them for a dollar. And when you're done, you can either pick the glue off or you can throw them away. I kind of keep them but you can kind of see how it's going together. Then you can always try it. She said, could you paint the wood for the head if you don't have a white ornament? Yes, you could. You can paint. Yeah, absolutely. Or I think if you go to Amazon, you can just look up like inch and a half white uh, Christmas balls. Yeah, Christmas ornaments, Christmas bulbs. Yeah. Right, and I think somebody sells them for, I don't know, like 10 or 15 of them in a pack. So just get the non-breakable ones. Get the Yes, you want plastic. Plastic, yeah. Okay, so now we're ready for her bell. Um her bell's going to actually go right here in the middle so that her bell it actually jingles. Mm -hmm. So this angel will have her own bell. It's going to go right on top of where we have our wire. This is going to get placed right here. So she's got a perfect look. Um, I have in the past used little styrofoam stars. Um, if you don't have a bell and you want to use a little foam star, you can put a star there. You can use the little scatters and fillers, the little red, the white, and the blue. You can use those if you can't find the balls. So you can find bells pretty much anywhere, too, and they come in red. White, blue, I, I think silver. you can get the silver and gold at Hobby Lobby year yeah. round in the craft section. Yeah. I think if you're looking for like the red or the green, because I always keep those for Christmas, um, those were only during Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So there's that. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to put her halo on. So I'm actually going to trim up the back, like right where my last little pieces are. I'm gonna go ahead and make that even. I'm going to flip her over. You're going to kind of hold her like a little baby. You're going to kind of put your finger right here because you're going to need to put some tension on the back. So if you look at it here, this is going to get glued along the back of her head and then down the back. So just like this is how it's all going to get laid out. Sadly, we can't really account for this. You know, that's about the, the back. You know, like there's always like, I don't know, I guess if you wanted to, you could put a piece of felt, but I've never ever had to worry about that. I just want to make sure that it's laying flat, that it's got the curve that goes around her head so that it'll fit and it's going to go straight down her back. So glue gun halfway up her head. We're going to lay a bead of glue here right down her back to right where this is going to end. We are going to make sure that everything lines up and we want to make sure that we put tension on the back of the head and then tension on the back of her body until this sets up. And then believe it or not, we are done. That's how simple it is to put one all together. And then you should have a show quality angel that you can use. You know, these are great for churches. Like I said, they're great for um, baby announcements. Graveside Memorials is a big, huge one. I always get those for um, someone who's recently lost somebody or they make a great inexpensive wreath to put on the, the gravestone, but we can do them in different colors. Mm -hmm. So they'll, you know, they'll do a pretty one for Christmas or um, one for Easter. You can... Um, I'm just fun to put together, you know? It's really fun trying to find new, new looks new to designs, make. Yeah, new. So I usually only do about four or five new designs each season. Like on um, the patriotic ones, I do the Americana look where you would do more rustic country with the wood ball. And then you would do the tan, the burgundy and the navy and not the red, white and blue. But there is our angel. She's all set. She's all ready to go. Um, what questions do you guys have? Yeah, I said love it. That's the back. So Harry. that's the ugly of the uglies, but I don't think it's that ugly. No, it's not. Um, so it's beautiful. Love your angels. Thank you so much for showing us how to make more of these. You are so welcome. I'm trying to do one, but I don't know when. <laughs> well, if you guys make them, please make sure you come back and share them. I'd love to see what you guys do. And um, like I said, mix and match the patterns for, you know, Fourth of July, you can do one with white wings and red, white, and blue skirt or pattern skirt, white wings or white, red, white, and blue all the way through. Um, it's just fun to develop new patterns and new looks. These are, these are great for um, your grandparents or parents who unfortunately you go like maybe hospice or like elderly homes where you yes. have to put something on their doors. Yes, we did these for Steve's parents when they were in assisted living because yeah. they were the perfect size for their interior doors. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Jen okay. Said, How much mesh do you use? It's only 12 pieces cut to 10 inches. So Yeah, you're using a third. Yeah. yeah, you're using a third of a roll of deco mesh. So it depends. Jerry says, can you come to California and teach me? Uh, I am already in California, so this mm -hmm. is where I am based. Um, could you glue flowers near the bow, Sandy asks. Yes, I've actually done that for spring. Yeah, little um, Yeah, if you can get the flowers small enough. I did ones for spring last year that we did in like a yellow flower, a blue flower, a pink flower, just pastels. So, all right. Another one if you want to show me that one. Um, oh, yeah, I have the rustic one here. Yeah, the rustic one that she can show you too. So... This is your more patriotic, and then this would be more of your rustic look. So she's all done in your tans with the wood ball. And see what I'm saying? The You've got the oval shape here, and she's just got a simple bow and a gingham. So exactly the same. 
created the exact same way. I just have her hung so she can sit on the, the back of the door. Um, Janet, if you're using regular deco mesh, you're gonna use a wood burning tool. If you're using ones like this where it's a burlap, you're gonna have to use a rotary cutter and then spray it with E6000 adhesive spray. So this is how I keep the phrase from getting out of control after it's already been complete. But there's nothing you can do to retard the um, phrase while you're cutting and assembling it. Linda, yes, they fit right between a storm door too. They're only like an inch and a half to two inches tall. Yeah, exactly. They're, um, I think this one's probably, we know that the ball is an inch and a half. Yeah. So probably about two inches. So they're perfect for storm doors. All right. I am going to let you guys go. Have an amazing week. And I, oh, really quick. Today is the last day to join the private group. We are closing the doors for the year. So um, if you've thought about joining and haven't you know, made the decision, today's the last day to join. The, the group will be closed first thing tomorrow. So catscreationsandmore.com if you guys want to come join us and see all the amazing stuff we're going to be doing during the summer. And other than that, I will talk to you all later. Have a great week.